1957's The Adventures of Twizzle was the very first television series produced by Jerry Anderson's AP Films, although it wasn't his first brush with puppets. You can tell he hasn't been here long. That came in the form of a commercial produced in 1956 for Kellogg's Ricicles, featuring the popular children's character Noddy, voiced by Denise Breyer. Hello children, it's me, little Noddy, and I've got something for you. Both this and another short puppet film, Here Comes Candy, were produced Produced by Pentagon Films and had caught the attention of author Roberta Lee, who came to Pentagon looking to adapt some of her children's stories for television. Well pulled, Candy. Her arrival coincided with the departure from Pentagon of Jerry Anderson and Arthur Provis, who were leaving to launch their own production company, AP Films. Have you heard of a Twizzle toy? You haven't? Well, that's because there's only one of them. Unwilling to turn down the chance to produce their own television series, despite Lee's insistence that it should be produced with puppets, Anderson and Provis set to work producing 52 15-minute episodes of Twizzle. I'm Twizzle! And I do! Twizzle was a toy who had the ability to extend his arms and legs, presumably providing the solution to all sorts of problems. Boo! In the first episode of the series, Twizzle runs away from a toy shop before he can be purchased by a horrid little girl. <coughs> and then befriends a stray cat named Footso. I've got such big paws, you see. But I'm always falling over them. In later episodes, the two friends encountered other lost toys and would band together to build Stray Town, a place where lost toys could live together in peace. Let's go to sleep now, and in the morning we can go looking for adventure. The series was the first Anderson production to be produced at Islet Park, a Victorian mansion that was adapted to serve the needs of a television studio. Oh, thank you so much. You are kind. Many names that would soon become vital members of the AP Films team joined the company around this time. Among the voice cast were Nancy Nevinson as Twizzle and Denise Breyer as Footso the Cat. Watch out. Watch out. The series was reasonably popular, with Twizzle's likeness appearing on various books, games, and records. I want that Twizzle toy. So you'd better hurry up and find him for me. Unfortunately, it's difficult to provide much more of an overview of the show because of the 52 episodes that were made, only the very first is currently known to exist. I wonder where Twizzle can be. However, Roberta Lee would return to AP Films the following year with a similar idea, Torchy the Battery Boy. Torchy, Torchy the Battery Boy. Torchy the Battery Boy opens with a small boy humping a fence. Torchy the Battery Boy opens in the garden of one Mr. Bumbledrop, a kindly old gentleman who enjoys nothing more innocent than inviting children into his garden so that he can watch them play. Uh -huh. When an exceptionally strong gust of wind blows away all their toys and his dog Pom Pom, the children will no longer come to Mr. Bumbledrop's garden which, despite his constantly smiling face, makes Mr. Bumbledrop very sad. Now I'm all by myself. Rather than report this odd occurrence to the authorities, who are presumably more than familiar with him already, Mr. Bumbledrop decides on a slightly different course of action to get his dog back. I'll make a toy boy. Thus is born Torchy the Battery Boy, a boy who is powered by a battery. <laughs> It's alive. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! With the help of his magic beam, Torchy manages to locate Pom Pom and the lost toys on a nearby twinkling star. But how to get them back? Why don't you build me a rocket ship? Then I can fly there! What a splendiferous idea! And so Mr. Bumbledrop builds a space rocket in his back garden, managing to do in one night what it probably took brains several years of design and research to accomplish. I don't believe it. Surely it, it can be true. Torchy then flies his rocket to the twinkling star, only to find that its magical properties have brought all the toys to life and allowed Pom Pom to speak. This is Topsy Turvy Land, where everything is Topsy Turvy. Since none of the toys want to give up their new lives on Topsy Turvy Land, they decide to settle there for good, and Torchy helps his new friends build a town out of giant pieces of fruit. Among these friends are Flopsy the Ragdoll. My head is nearly empty. Pillywig the Clown. <laughs> Squish the Spaceman. Stick him up. 
No, I won't. Aha! Uh, um, and, and many other delightful characters. Aren't I humming beautifully? Torchy the Battery Boy followed in the same whimsical fairy tale style as Twizzle. And in comparing the first episode of Torchy to the first episode of Twizzle, we can see just how much the latter show must have evolved over the course of its run. The sets have improved considerably, creating a world that feels much more spacious than that seen in the first installment of Twizzle, and scenes are now shot from more than one angle. Goody, goody. The puppets, while still crude, became more imaginative in their design and much more expressive. And we even got the very first Jerry Anderson model effect sequence in the form of the space rocket that flew Torchy and his friends to and from the twinkling star. What a lot of fun Torchy is going to have when he reaches the twinkling star. These frequent comings and goings also gave the series a serialised quality that many of its contemporary counterparts lacked. However, the passing of time has had a very strange effect on Torchy the Battery Boy. You stuffed it inside me. I didn't. Yes, you did. And that's exactly what I'm going to do to you. While it's often frustrating to hear modern viewers look back at vintage children's shows and read hidden meanings into them that were never there to begin with, Torchy seems to revel in being hugely inappropriate. You always undressed me, and that's what I'm going to do to you. Don't you dare! To the extent that it's almost impossible to find an episode that doesn't feature at least one line of dialogue that doesn't sound just a bit naughty when taken out of context. When I have tea with you, you can give me a cherry and a kiss. Or even when left in context. My Pongo, the pirate, I love to pinch and spank. And when he isn't going to bed with an old man, specifically not to sleep. You can't go to sleep during the day. Torchy himself is often to be found abducting naughty children from Earth so that they can be taught a lesson by the toys on Topsy Turvy Land. I've brought you twins, and I want you to teach them how to behave. I'll put them in the dungeon. Thank you, Your Majesty. The main character is so unintentionally sinister that he's just a knife away from being a predecessor of Chucky. Serves you right. But the rest of the show could at times be a deeply unsettling production, particularly when the lights go out. Eyes in the dark. Night's very big, <laughs> but I'll try and push it out and I'll... Oh! But it's terribly funny stuff if you're in the mood for some utter filth, though. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Torchy the Battery Boy would continue in a second series of 26 more episodes, but without the involvement of Jerry Anderson and AP Films, who by this time were looking to cut ties with Roberta Lee and create their own series. That series would be Four Feather Falls, which would ultimately premiere in the UK just three days after Torchy's first broadcast, and feature the voice of Mr. Bumbledrop himself, Kenneth Connor, among its cast. This would also be the first and only occasion that Anderson would have two television series premiering in the UK at the same time. Will I never? The two puppet television series produced for Roberta Lee by AP Films may seem extremely crude today. Oh, what a lot of nonsense you're talking. But nevertheless were the seed from which the beautiful tree of Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet and Stingray would soon grow. Whatever do those ugly words mean. Both Twizzle and Torchy were imaginative and magical to young minds of the late 1950s, and those who saw these shows as children still have fond memories of both. I'm drowning in cheese! I'll try and save you. Torchy the Battery Boy is still hugely entertaining for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> But many Anderson fans still hope that one day, Twizzle might also be able to join Torchy on DVD. Don't forget to come back and see us one day. Perhaps, if you look up at the night sky this evening, you might make a wish on a twinkling star. That one day, the 51 missing episodes of Twizzle might be found and returned to the archives where they belong. Yeah.